All right, everyone, let's explore sample rate and sound quality. So I do have a previous video that this video is going to be building upon. So I'll put a card for that up on the screen, but it's basically a video all about the Nyquist theorem and how that affects sample rate and how sample rate and the Nyquist theorem affect the sound that we hear, right? So the basic cliff notes are that the higher the sample rate, the more accurately our frequencies are reproduced, right? And it gets way more complicated than that. But the basic idea is that, and then the other basic idea to hang on to here is that the Nyquist theorem states that we have to sample at least twice for for each cycle of a sound, so each wavelength. And you know, there are a bunch of ways to think about it, but for each time our sound goes through a cycle, so depending on the frequency, that's gonna be a different rate, we have to sample at least twice to be able to accurately recreate that frequency within the digital realm. And I explained the why on this in much more detail in that other video, and I used visual aids and everything to, to help explain that concept. So if you wanna understand the why for that, please go check out that video. If you want a deeper understanding, please go check out that video. I'm not gonna be going into that today. Today what I wanted to do is do more of a listening adventure to hear the effects of that concept. So when we think about the Nyquist theorem, saying we have to sample each cycle at least twice, and we also think about frequencies, right? If something is higher frequency, higher pitched, it's gonna have a shorter wavelength. And if it's a lower frequency, lower pitch, it's gonna have a longer wavelength. So it goes to reason that as we lower the sample rate, those high frequencies are gonna be what we lose first, right? Because they have the shorter wavelength. So in order to sample them at least twice, we have to have a more frequent sampling rate than the lower frequencies. So. With that in mind, this is what we're gonna listen to today. And we will be listening to pretty extreme examples here. So that's both so that people who have not been training their ears as long can hear and understand the concepts. Also, I feel like hearing extreme examples sometimes helps your brain latch on to what you're hearing, what you're understanding, even if you do have a very developed ear. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that YouTube's going to be affecting my audio, I'm pretty sure. Um, we should still be able to hear and understand the concepts here though, because these examples are pretty extreme. And the other thing to keep in mind is that I am running this audio out of this computer and into a secondary computer to record it so that my screen capture is not where I'm getting the audio from. So hopefully the screen capture is not affecting the sound quality, the, the sound at all, um, because it's not a part of it. So with that said, Let's take a look at this. So what I have here is I have this beat that I made using Splice samples. So if you haven't checked out Splice, you definitely should, they're awesome. But I have the beat here and I've just imported it three times. I think that's all we're gonna do. But basically if you look over here, I have 48 kilohertz, so 48,000 hertz. This is the original track. This is not downsampled at all. And then what I have here is I have one that I've downsampled to 8,000 hertz, so eight kilohertz. And then I have one that I've downsampled to 4,000 hertz, which is four kilohertz. And I'm doing this in Audacity because Pro Tools, the lowest option you have is 44.1 kilohertz. That's still pretty high. It's not really enough to hear the effects here. But what I'm going to do in a second here is I'm going to hit play and I'll toggle between these. So I'm going to hit solo. We'll listen to this one. I'll hit solo on this one. We'll listen to this one. And then I'll hit solo on this one and we will listen to this one. And what you should be able to hear is as we go down in our uh, sample rate, as we go into a lower sample rate, basically you'll hear that those upper frequencies cut out. So if you listen to like the snap on the percussion, that'll become less and less obvious. It's gonna sound more underwater, more muffled because those high frequencies are no longer able to be reproduced. So, and you know, I mentioned this in my other video, but you think about the range of human hearing, right? The upper range is ish considered to be 20,000 Hertz. So 20 kilohertz, right? And in order to sample that at least twice, we need to have at least 40,000 Hertz, right? So 48,000 Hertz should be enough to get the range of human hearing. There's other details like aliasing and stuff that come into play, but we're not gonna dig into that today. We're just gonna stick with the basics here today. Um, so you think about it, 8,000 Hertz, uh, what's half of that is 4,000 hertz. So that's gonna limit what we can hear. So, you know, you can just do the math, cut it in half to figure out what the upper range of what you should be able to hear what the different sample rates is, right? So 48, it's going to be 24. Eight is gonna be four. 4,000 hertz is gonna be 2,000 hertz. So the Nyquist theorem tells us that. All right, so I'm gonna start by soloing this high fidelity version and I'm gonna go partway through the track. Um, it'll be a little more fun, a little more interesting, a little more stuff to listen to. So I'm gonna just hit play so we can hear what the baseline is, what the high quality version is, the 48,000 Hertz version. No. 
So that's the high quality version. Let's listen to the 8,000 hertz version. So listen for it to sound more muffled. Listen to those high frequencies. So it's a huge difference, right? So now let's go down to 4,000 hertz. So you hear how muffled that is? And you think about it, if we're sampling something at least twice and we're at 4,000 hertz, that means that the upper range of what we're hearing should be about 2,000 hertz. That's really, really low. That's a lot of our like snap and our transients is, is above that. So it sounds very, very muffled. So again, I'm gonna toggle between these really quickly so you can hear the difference. So that's basically that. Uh, so hopefully that helps someone out there better understand, better process how the sampler rate affects the quality that we hear and why, you know, a lot of DAWs, the lower limit for our sample rate is actually pretty high. It's usually like 44.1 kilohertz or something like that. So I hope you guys liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. And my patrons get access to some additional content. We have a Discord server that we're all hanging out on. It's been a lot of fun. I know I say this every time. It feels kind of silly. But it really has been a lot of fun, especially the Discord server. I've been really into focusing on that lately, really into that lately. So I think that's basically it. But I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I'm going to go get the new Spitfire audio pack, though, and play with that. And I have veggies at my door. I'm going to go get the veggies before they disappear. Um, I have a headache. So I guess I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.